Today we are going to uh, discuss the unpaired t-test or the t-test for independent means. In the previous lecture, we discussed the general null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis for the comparison of the mean values, that if we are interested in comparing the mean values of the two groups or the two populations, then what is our general null hypothesis or what is our general alternate hypothesis. And then we also discussed um, different uh, concepts, uh, like we discussed the concept of the unmatched and matched observations. The unmatched observations are the unpaired observations, and the matched observations are the paired observations. And we saw the difference between these two types of observations with different examples, and there are two different types of the t-test which are used for uh, these two types of the observations. And then we discussed that the observations, uh, they should have a normal distribution. So our observations, they should be normally distributed. Our data should have a normal distribution if we want to carry out the t-test or if we want to compare the mean values of the two groups. And then we um, discussed another concept about the homogeneity of variances. So this concept is that the variances of the two groups that we are going to compare the mean values of, so variances of these two groups, they should be same. So the population variances, they should be same if we want to carry out the t-test. And this is a requirement for the unpaired t-test or the t-test for independent means. And this homogeneity of variances can be checked through a simple uh, variance ratio which is calculated through the f-test. So f-test is a simple variance ratio which is in which the greater variance is divided by the lesser variance and if the ratio of the two variances it is significantly greater than unity then we should not perform the t-test. So in order for the homogeneity of variances to be similar this value of the f it should be non-significantly different from 1. So if our variances are non-significantly different from each other, then we can proceed for the t-test. So today we are going to discuss the unpaired t-test, which is a t-test for independent means, or for the unmatched means. So this t-test is used for comparing the means of samples from two separate populations or groups. So as its name indicates that this is the test for two unpaired or the unmatched groups to independent groups. So in this case we are going to have two independent populations and we, we are going to compare the means of the samples from these two separate populations or groups. So this is the purpose of using the unpaired t-test. And this t-test is also known as the independent t-test or the independent measures t-test, independent two sample t-test, and the student's t-test. So this is the uh, quite the famous uh, name for this test, the student's t-test. That is the most familiar name for this unpaired t-test. And then it is also known as the unpaired t-test and the unrelated t-test. So these are the different names for the same statistic for the same test, which is the t-test for independent means. And this t-test is used for comparing the mean values of two different populations or two different groups, which are measured for the same variable. So this unpaired t-test, it is used for calculating the statistical differences between the means of two groups. For example, the mean height of conifers between two regions. So let's suppose we have uh, measured the height of conifers from two different regions, from two different populations, and we want to compare the mean height of these two groups then we are going to apply the unpaired t-test. Why this is unpaired? Because these are observations from two different regions and the observations they are not uh, related to each other. And it is also used for uh, calculating the statistical differences between the means of two interventions. For example, uh, the plankton diversity under two different pH ranges. For example, if we have two water bodies which have different pH ranges and if we want to compare the population, uh, sorry, plankton di density from these two different water bodies, then we are going to apply the t-test for independent means. And why this specific t-test? Because the, the, these observations, they are taken from two different populations. So these are the general uh, conditions in which the unpaired t-test or the t-test for independent means is used. Now, what are the requirements for the t-test? So the foremost uh, requirement is that the two samples should be independent from each other. So as it is evident from the name of this t-test that it is the t-test for independent means or the unpaired means, so it means that the samples, they should be two independent samples. 
so it means that the observations they should be independent of each other so there should be an independence of observations so the observations in uh, each of these two groups they should have no relationship with each other and there should be no relationship between units as well in each sample so units in the sample they should be also independent of each other and there should be no overlap of units between the two groups so there should be no overlap and the units in the uh, in in both of the groups they should be exclusive for example if you have taken observation from one unit we are not going to take the same observation or we are not going to measure the same variable and place that observation into the other group so these units they should be exclusive they can be placed only in one of the groups so we cannot take observations from uh, from one sampling unit for both of the groups so one unit should be placed only in one of the groups they should be exclusive then no unit in either group can influence units in the other group so there should be no influence of observations taken from one unit on the observations taken from the other or if we are doing an intervention then there should be no influence of uh, one unit on the other unit and similarly there should be no influence of one group on the other so the two independent sample means that the samples they should be totally independent which starts from the the population level that the two groups or the two populations they should be totally independent or unrelated to each other and then uh, coming to the sampling units the sampling units they also should be independent of each other they should not be related to each other and the um, the uh, unit uh, one unit should not influence another unit within the same group or in the other group and then the observations they should also be independent of each other so the two samples they should be totally independent if we want to carry out the unpaired t test the other requirements for the unpaired t-test are that this test can be applied on the uh, data which is obtained from measurement of continuous variable so we cannot use this t-test on the discrete data or we cannot use this um, kind of the t-test on the data which is on the nominal scale or the ordinal scale so we can use this type of t-test on the continuous variable which is measured on interval or ratio scale and then the uh, property uh, or and then the requirement that we discussed in the last lecture is that the data should be normally distributed the observations they should have a normal distribution and why is that so so that we can apply the principles of critical probability to an accurate extent and then the homogeneity variances between the two groups that the variances of the variable that we are measuring that uh, variance should be identical in both of the study groups and then the two groups they should have almost similar sample size so this test is quite flexible so it allows uh, the two samples to have a different size so the number of observations in the two groups that could be different but that difference should not be a huge difference so there should not be a huge difference in the sample size of the two groups and the small differences they are allowed so this test is quite flexible in that sense that you can have different observations from the two groups, different number of observations from the two groups. So these are the requirements of the unpaired t-test. So unless and until you meet all these requirements, you cannot have the precise calculation or precise result of the t-test. You, you can do the calculations, you can carry out the analysis, but that analysis is not going to be a precise or accurate analysis so these requirements they should be met before you are applying the student's t-test which is the t-test for independent means now we are going to uh, start the calculation we are going to see that how this t-test is executed so we are going to take the example uh, which is the length of adult silver carps measured from a pond so we have uh, two groups or two populations, the female silver carps and the male silver carps. So the uh, female silver carps, they are labeled sample number one and the male carps, they are labeled sample number two. So the uh, number of observations from the first group, which is the female silver carps, is eight. And the number of observations from the second group, which is the male silver carps, is six. 
then the mean length of the female silver carps is 72.99 centimeters and the mean length of the male silver carps is 74.8 centimeters then the standard deviation of the length from the mean length is 1.48 centimeters for the female silver carps and it is 1.04 for the male silver carps and then uh, the variance variance is 2.2 centimeters for the female silver carps and 1.08 centimeters for the male silver carps so why we have labeled female silver carps as sample number one because the variance of the female group is greater than the variance of the male group now is the time to put our question and the question is is there any difference in the mean length of female and male silver carps and our null hypothesis in this case is there is no difference in the mean length of female and male populations of silver carp in the pond so because this is null hypothesis so we are going to assume no difference so there is no difference in the mean length of female and male populations of silver carp in the pond and the alternate hypothesis is there is a difference in the mean length of female and male populations of silver carp in the pond so this is our question and our hypothesis so what should be our next step yes so what are we going to do now uh, because we are going to employ the unpaired t-test so we should make sure that the variance ratio is equal to unity or the variances of the two samples they are same so for that purpose we are going to calculate the variance ratio which is the f value the null hypothesis for this one is the variances in the length of female and male populations of silver carp are same and the alternate hypothesis is variances in the length of female and male populations of silver carp are different so these are our null and alternate hypothesis for the F test now it is time for the calculation of the F test and here you can see that we have the table of the descriptive statistics with us on the side and this is the formula for the F test in which the greater variance is divided by the lesser variance and which sample has got the greater variance the female group has got the greater variance which is 2.2 divided by 1.08 so our f value is 2.037 so this is our variance ratio and we can see that this variance ratio is greater than 1 now we want to see that is it significantly greater than 1 or we can ignore this so for that purpose we have to calculate the degrees of freedom and we are going to calculate v1 and v2 so v1 is the degree of freedom for a sample with the greater variance which in this case is the female carbs group so 8 minus 1 is 7 uh, which is our v1 and v2 is 5 and this is the degree of freedom for the other sample which is the sample of the male carbs and uh, why this sample is sample number 2 because it has got lesser variance so now we have calculated the degrees of freedom and now it is time to consult the F distribution table and the table value of F at probability 0 0.05 is 4.88. So we can see that our calculated value is less than the table value at probability 0 0.05. So we are going to accept our null hypothesis for the F test and we are going to say that variances in the length of female and male populations of silver carp are same so we can proceed for the t-test now we are going to apply the t-test and this is the formula for t-test so this formula looks a little scary but don't get scared of this formula this is a very simple formula and it involves the input of only three types of the values the mean values of both samples the number of observations of the both samples and variances of the both samples so we are going to put in the values so we put 72.99 minus 74.8 these are the mean values for the two groups and then we have in the denominator section we have 
first 8 minus 1 multiplied by 2.2 so 8 is the number of observations in the first group which is the female silver carbs and 2.2 is the variance of the female silver carbs and then we have 6 minus 1 6 is the number of observations in the male group and 1.08 is the variance in in the male silver carbs and then we have 8 plus 6 minus 2 so 8 is the number of observations in the first group and 6 is the number of observations in the other group and then in the next factor we have 8 plus 6 which are the number of observations in both groups divided by 8 uh, into 6 8 multiplied by 6 which are also the number of observations so this is how we input the observations into the formula for t-test now the difference between the mean values of the two groups is minus 1.81 and then we have 7 uh, which we got by subtracting 1 from 8 so 7 multiplied by 2.2 and we have 5 which is the degree of freedom for the sample number 2 and we are multiplying it by 1.08 and then we have 12 which is 8 plus 6 14 minus 2 and then the next factor we have 14 which is 8 plus 6 and 48 which is 8 multiplied by 6 now because we are going on to the next slide so I'm going to copy this same step and pasting it here so now we are going to solve it further and we can see that we have now 15.4 which is the product of 7 multiplied by 2.2 and we have 5.4 which is the product of multiplication of 5 by 1.08 and then we have 0.2917 which we got after dividing 14 by 48 the rest of the two uh, calculations are same then in the next step we are going to take the sum of 15.4 and 5.4 so we have 20.8 divided by 12 and the other value is also same now I'm again going to copy this step for the next slide so now we have 20.8 divided by 12 and the answer is 1.7333 so we are going to multiply it with 0.297 and we get 0.5056 and now we are going to take the square root of this value and this is 0.7111 so now we are going to divide 1.81 by 0.7111 and we get our value of t which is minus 2.545 in this case so now we have our test statistic we have done the calculation of the t value so you see that this is quite the simple formula this is not a complicated calculation at all so the formula looks scary but it is not scary at all once you understand that how to execute it and this is a very simple execution so we have our test statistic with us what is the next step yes in the next step we are going to calculate the degrees of freedom and what is the degree of freedom in this case for the unpaired t-test the formula for calculation of degree of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2 so in this case we have 12 degree of freedom and our t statistic is 2.545 now we are going to consult the t-distribution table so this is our t-distribution table and if you remember the hypothesis that we had we had the null hypothesis that there is no difference in the mean length of female and male silver cars and our alternate hypothesis was that there is a difference between the length of the female and male silver cars so what was our alternate hypothesis was it two tailed or one tailed because we were not nominating any of the two samples to have a greater value of mean so this is a two tailed test so we are going to check the values for the two-tailed analysis and our degree of freedom is 12 so let's see what is our first level of critical probability this is 0 0.05 and then the calculated value at probability of 0 0.05 is 2.179 and then we have our next level of critical probability which is 0 0.01 and the table value for this one is 3.055 
and our next level is 0 0.001 and the critical value at this level is 4.318. So now we have the T value, which is 2.545, the degree of freedom, which is 12, and the table values. So the table value at probability 0 0.05 is 2.1788. So now we see that which of the two values is greater, our calculated value or the table value. So in this case, our calculated value is greater than the table value. So what we are going to do with the null hypothesis, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Now we want to see the significance at the next level of critical probability, which is 0 0.01. And the value here is 3.055, which is greater than our calculated value. So it means that uh, we have rejected the null hypothesis because the difference between the mean values is significant. But this difference is not highly significant as our uh, calculated value is less than the table value at probability 0 0.01. And there is no need to look for the next level of critical probability. So we are going to, uh, to state our result. And the result is there is a significant difference in the mean length of female and male silver carbs. The T value is minus 2.55 and probability is less than 0 0.05. So this is the result that we have. So you see the t-test calculation is not a complex calculation. It is very simple. Now we have another example for the t-test for independent means and this example is the height of students uh, measured from two groups the morning group of students and the evening group of students and here are the observations which are the height of students and this is our descriptive statistics so you see that you don't have to do the uh, calculation of the mean value and the standard deviation and variance in this case so we are going straight into the analysis of uh, very uh, analysis of uh, the t test so this is our descriptive statistics in which we have the number of observations in the morning group which is 18 and the number of observations in the second group which is evening and this observation number is 16 so we have 18 observations from the morning group and 16 observations from the evening group. So again, you can see that the um, sample size is different and uh, we can still apply the t-test because this unpaired t-test, it allows for the different sample sizes. Now the mean height of students from the first group uh, is 66.56 inches and the mean height of students from the second group is 64.63 inches. So there is a difference. Uh, we can see that there is a difference in the mean height of the, t the two groups. But whether this difference is significant or no, and for that purpose, we are going to apply the t-test. So the uh, standard, uh, uh, sorry, the variance for the first group is 23.91, and the variance for the second group is 13.45 inches. The standard deviation of the height of students from the mean value in the morning group is 4.889 inches and the standard deviation from the mean value in the second group is 3.667 inches. So this is the example that we have with us. So does this qualify to be uh, tested through the unpaired t-test? The data is normally distributed and the, it is measured on a continuous scale and the two groups they are independent of each other. So we are going to proceed for the t-test. Now it is time to uh, put the question and the question is, is there a difference in the mean height of students in morning and evening groups? And to solve this question, we have to state the hypothesis and the null hypothesis is the mean height of students in morning and evening groups are same. And the alternate hypothesis is the mean height of students in morning and evening groups are different from each other. So again, this is a two-tailed hypothesis that we are going to discuss. So what should be our next step after we have stated the hypothesis? Next step is to check the um, homogeneity of variances, that if the variances in the height of students in the two groups is same or no. And for that purpose, we are going to calculate the value of f. And the null hypothesis for this test is the variances in the height of students from morning and evening groups are same. And the alternate hypothesis is the variances in the height of students from morning and evening groups are different. 
So this is the uh, formula for F test, the greater variance divided by the lesser variance. And the greater variance uh, we can see is of the morning group, which is 23.91, which is our group number one. So 23.91 divided by 13.45, which is the variance for the evening group. And our value is 1.777, and we can see that this is greater than one. So now we want to see that if it is significantly greater than one so we go to the F distribution table and we see the table value but before that we have to calculate the degrees of freedom and the degree of freedom uh, V1 is 18 minus 117 which is the degree of freedom for the sample number one with the greater variance and V2 is 16 minus 115 which is the degree of freedom for the sample with the lesser variance which is evening in this case now the table value of f at probability 0.05 and uh, v1, v2, 17 and 15, we have 2.368. So we can see that our table value is greater than the calculated value. So we can say that variances in the height of morning and evening student groups are same and we are safe to proceed for the t-test. So now we are going to apply the t-test and for that purpose we have the formula for the t-test and it requires the input of the mean values of the two samples, the number of observations from the two samples and variances from the two samples. So here we have 66.56 which is the mean height of students from the morning group and 64.63 which is the mean height of students from the evening group. And then we have the number of observations in the first group which is 18 and we have variance which is 23.91 from the first group then we have 16 which is the number of observations from the second group which is the evening group and 13.45 which is the variance from the second group which is the evening group and then we have 18 plus 16 which are the number of observations in the two groups uh, minus 2 and then in the next factor we have 18 plus 16 and this is going to be divided by the product of the multiplication of 18 into 16 and again these are the number of observations. So solving this one 66.56 minus 64.63 is equal to 1.93. So this is the difference in the mean values. And then we have 18 minus 1 which is equal to 17 1. We are going to multiply this one by 23.91. And then we have 16 minus 1, uh, which is equal to 15. And we are going to multiply this 15 by the variance, which is 13.45. And then we have 32, which is the product of 18 plus 16 minus 2. And in the next factor, we have 34, which is 18 plus 16. And 288, which is the product of 18 multiplied by 16. Now for the continuity of calculation, I'm going to copy this uh, last step and I'm going to paste this one into the next slide. And here we are for the continuity of calculation. So we have 17, 17 multiplied by 23.91 and the answer is 406.47. And then we have 15 multiplied by 13.45, and the answer is 201.75. And then we have 34 divided by 288, and the answer is 0.1181. Rest of the two values are the same because they didn't need any further calculation until the next step. So now we have the sum of 4.406.47 plus 201.75 so we added these two values and the answer is 608.22 and this is to be divided by 32 which we, which we are going to do in the next slide so the 608.22 divided by 32 the answer is 19.0069 and this is to be multiplied by 0.1181 and we get the answer as 2.2447 so now what we have to do is we have to take the square root of this value and the square root of this value is 1.4982 and now we divide 1.93 by 1.4982 and we get the answer which is 1.288 so this is our test statistic this is the value of t that we calculate what is the next step 
the degrees of freedom, and then the concentration of the T distribution table. So our degree of freedom is N1 plus N2 minus 2, 18 plus 16 minus 2, which is 32. So 32 is our degree of freedom. And this is our uh, test statistic, which is the calculated value 1.288. And the table value at probability 0 0.05 is 2.0369. So which one is greater, the table value or the calculated value? So the table value is greater, <clears throat> so it means that the probability of null hypothesis to be true is what it is. It is greater than 0 0.05 or it is less than 0 0.05. It is greater than 0 0.05. So what should we do next? Should we uh, put in the values of the table value at probability 0 0.01 and table value at probability 0 0.001? No, there is no need for that because our results are already non-significant and we are going to accept the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is accepted and we are going to state our results. So the result is the difference between the mean height of students in the morning and evening groups is non-significant. T value 1.288 and probability greater than 0 0.05. So this is the result that we have. So after we are done uh, with the calculation of t-test on the paper, now it is time to perform t-test for independent means in Microsoft Excel. So here we are going to see that how it is done. So for that purpose, first of all, you have to put your observations in an Excel sheet. So in this case, I've taken the example of the mean height of students from two groups, the morning group and the evening group. So after um, you're done with putting the observations into the Excel sheet, so you can see that there are different tabs in the Excel. So you have to press the data analysis function tab. And you will have a pop-up window appearing. And this window has got the list of statistical tests that can be done under the data analysis function of Microsoft Excel. So just scroll down to see the types of the t-test that are available. So we have three types of the t-test available in this one. T-test for the paired two sample for means, t-test for two sample assuming equal variances, and t-test for two samples assuming unequal variances. Now you have to choose your desired test, which in this case is the t-test for two sample assuming equal variances. So after you have uh, selected your test, press the OK button. So you have a new uh, window popped up and this uh, window is for the input of your values or input of your observations. So you can see that it has got different boxes in it. So first of all you have to select the values of sample number one and for that purpose you have to place your cursor into the box number one um, and then you have to select the range of the observations, the observations in sample number one. So you can see that the cell numbers that contain these observations, they will appear into this box. And then you are going to select the values of sample number two. And for that purpose, you're going to place your cursor into this box. And then you're going to select the observations for the sample number two. So here you have the cell numbers appearing in the box number two for the sample number two. Now you have to press the output range button. So this output range is uh, for uh, the display of your output, that where you want to have your output. So you have to press uh, this uh, button to see and to select that where do you want to have your output. So whether you want your output into the same sheet, into a separate sheet, and, or into a separate workbook. So if you want to have um, your output into the same sheet, then you have to place your cursor here. And if you want to have your output into a new sheet, then you have to press this one, new worksheet button. And if you want to have your output into a different workbook, then you have to press this button for the new workbook. So this is how you do it. Now we want the output into the same sheet. So therefore, we place the cursor in this box and then we select the cell in which we want to have our output. 
So you can see that that cell number D2 is appearing into this box. So it means that this is the place where we want to have our output. Now press the OK button to get the output. And here is the output. Now after we are done with expanding the cells of the output, we are going to see our results in detail. And we can see that first of all we have the mean values of the two samples and then we have variances of the two samples. Then we have the number of observations of the two samples. Then we have the pooled variance here. So what is the pooled variance? It is the estimation of common variance for different populations with equal variances. So this is the pooled variance that we have for this um, observation. So right now we don't need pooled variance for the analysis, but um, uh, the Microsoft Excel is going to give you this output. And this, uh, this is the hypothetical mean difference. So remember what hypothesis we had? So we had the null hypothesis in which we assumed no difference. So our hypothesized mean difference is obviously zero in this case. And this is the degree of freedom, 32. And this is the t-test statistic, 1.288. So this is our calculated value of t. And then we have the probability for the one tail test, which is 0 0.10. And then we have the critical value for the one tailed test, which is 1.6939. And then we have the probability value for the two tailed test. And we have the critical value for the two tailed test, which is 0 0.2.0369. So you see, uh, because our alternate hypothesis was two-tailed, so therefore we are not interested into the results of the one-tail, we are only interested in the results of the two-tail hypothesis. So uh, you can see that uh, our calculated value is less than the table value of 2.0369, so we are going to accept the null hypothesis. and. In, uh, and what is the advantage of using these softwares for the statistical analysis is that you actually don't have to compare the calculated and the tabled value. You get the probability as such. So in this case, we have the two-tailed probability value given here, which is 0 0.20. So this is the actual probability of null hypothesis to be true. So the probability of null hypothesis to be true is 0 0.2067, which is obviously greater than 0 0.05. Therefore, we are going to accept the null hypothesis. So it is going to give, a, give us the actual value of the p, actual value of the p for the significance or for the acceptance or the rejection of the t, uh, of the null hypothesis. So this, these are, this is the output that we have. Now you can see that these are the same results as, as we had calculated. So uh, the results that we calculated on paper was the t-value 1.288. This is the same value as given here. And the degree of freedom that we calculated was 32. And this is the same as uh, given in this output. And then the table value that we, uh, 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 that we got from the T distribution table was 2.0369. And you can see that this is the same critical value which is given here, 2.0369. So you're getting the same results in Microsoft Excel that you did through, uh, the, through your paperwork uh, by applying the t-test formula. And the result is same that you have got your null hypothesis accepted. So this is how we do the um, a t test analysis in Microsoft Excel. So I think this is clear for now. In the next lecture, we are going to see that how the paired t test, which is the t test for the dependent means, is executed. Mm -hmm.